We're both in? Good? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just do the little shout out. Well, not little shout out, but shout out right now. So I want to take this time and shout out uh, World's Gym. Really great gym. A lot of uh, phenomenal people. You have power builder, uh, bodybuilders, power lifters, strongmen, Olympic liftings, Olympic lifters, uh, boxers in this gym. Really great gym, really great uh, community. Uh, for those who stay out in Fayetteville, North Carolina, one of the best gyms out there. Um, I want to take this time and give a, a really big shout out to Coach. Um, one, I want to say thank you. Um, Absolutely. So I've been, I haven't hit a year yet, mm -hmm. but um, my realm is fitness. Um, I'm more on the powerlifting side. I do plan on getting on the platform one day. Um, but everybody, uh, whether it's Worlds, Lions, the gyms around Fayetteville, North Carolina, um, you guys uh, are very, very impactful to this community in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Absolutely. I see you in here every day, uh, eating, uh, working out, training. So I said, you know what? Um, I want to have a sit down with this guy. Um, I've done sessions with you before. Absolutely. Smoker, complete smoker. But um, other than that, allow me to stop yapping. So what I do is I just say, hey, because this isn't uh, scripted or anything. Okay. I don't have a pen and no, pad. I go off flowing energy. So please introduce yourself and the questions will just flow from there. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set the time while you are talking. Okay. Hmm? I'm, I go by Master Antonio. Um, I have a master's in martial arts. I've been in this combative world for a long time. I'll say that. Keep it going, keep it going, you're good, you're good. A long time, I, um, I've trained, I've trained different types of individuals from boxing to mixed martial arts, kickboxing. I've competed myself in, in boxing, kickboxing, and in mixed martial arts. Uh, as far as dealing with cage fighting. So um, I've been around, I've reached out to different people to receive the information that I have. Um, I've actually been in the ring, been in the cage, I've been there. So I know what it's like, I'm just, I feel it's different for you know some people that, that express their desire to help, but have no information, mm -hmm. no sound information. So, um if I'm everywhere, forgive me, but I promise you, the way that I interact with people, I bring a full circle. Absolutely. So typically, I would ask where the fitness journey began. I'm, I'm gonna say that towards the back end. So your, uh, your journey as a martial artist, like, where did that begin? What age? Like, what got you interested in the realm of martial arts? My brothers were boxers. Okay. And my father um, saw that I was the runt of the litter. <laughs> okay. I was a little smaller, so mm -hmm. what he decided to do was to push me in different Arts, okay. Because he believed in, in, as I do, I believe every man should know how to defend themselves. What age did that start? I was maybe eight years old. Oh, so uh, was it boxing? It was or boxing what? first. So what was that regime like for you at, at a young age, coach? Um, it was different. I mean, starting off, you know, as a young guy, and if you have a an individual that's working with you that that doesn't understand, you know, the building. It takes a building. You just can't put a person in and just expect them to be a certain way. It takes a building. I didn't have that building. I had a guy that was just pretty relentless. So I worked under that. Um, it, was, it was different. Now I've learned as far as me dealing with younger kids or people that are starting off not to just be relentless, not off the bat. I got you. So um, at that age, uh, so, so you're training, uh, in your boxing training regime, like, 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 what all did you learn? Um, and was, was this from your father? J just clarify for me mm -hmm. in the audience. Was this from your, mm -hmm. your pops or was it from a trainer? It was actually from a trainer. Okay, so, so what and all my did... brothers. Yeah, so, um, young age uh, started when you were eight, like, like, so what were you introduced, like, like, in that realm of martial arts, of, of, of boxing, like, mm -hmm. like, like, sh like, did you shadow box first? Did you learn technique? Like, 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 what, what was the, the base? I think with me, mm -hmm. and I've been holding this, for a while as far as the concept of, of, of being able to move my footwork. Footwork was very important. Okay. And the, the, the instructor believed that the footwork 
would would take you where you needed to be as i believe right now as a lot of other individuals that speak on boxing and combative sports they say the same thing if you if you look at it your footwork is everything okay um how long were you uh, uh training for before you actually first stepped into the ring against an opponent um it took me a while i think i was maybe 12 and i actually worked worked in and in in sparring Mm -hmm. actual sparring actual sparring in another place and then from there um actual com competition so is there a difference between i know it's a dub but i'm just asking so so is there a difference between um training and regime and, and, and sparring at your gym versus actually getting in the ring uh fighting an opponent for some people it's a mental thing okay for some however if you're in here and i believe in the atmosphere some people close you in, no one can see you, no one can, you know, but you're not used to the people watching. I like when the people are watching because it allows my, the guys, as they're working, there's, with us, uh, as we push, there's nothing to prove we're building. We have nothing to prove. Bravado is, in some places it's needed, but not in your gym. There's no need for bravado. So you're working on skill. So, but with the people that are watching, sometimes the nerves get to people and the nerves, the way you're breathing, because there's so many different concepts. You have to hold your, your stance, you have to hold your ground, you have to know when to, to, to shoot a shot, know when to defend a shot. You have to know all of these things in that small amount of time against a guy who's throwing shots at you. Okay. Constant. So with that being said, uh, how about this? So if you can remember your very first match, like what were your feelings? Did you get the jitters? Were you, ner were you nervous? Were you ready to go with just, yeah? I, I, I think a little wild at first, coming out wildly to where my coach actually had to tell me to calm down because I was just going in. And, but as it, it, as it went on, I, I, I lost that. I lost that. My first match, I lost. Okay. Um, and the guy was just really rough. He okay. was really, really rough. He meant business. He came in and he meant business like that. I was trying to get it, but I was really, really small at the time. But, but that guy meant business. So, um, so you were 12 when, when you did your, uh, your first bout. So how old, how old was the other guy? Um, same age. Same, same age. Around so the same because you have a, a, a bracket that you have to, that you, that you go on. And, um, and you, can, you can tell he was working. He, he, had, he had little muscles and everything. He looked really, really ready. Okay. He was really, really ready. And um, yeah, but you have to stay in the same bracket, same weight, weight same mm -hmm. age range like that. Got you, got you. So with that being said, um, Leading up to the fight, right, and, and again, I, I will bring all of this full circle, mm -hmm. Coach, but uh, leading up to that very first fight at you as, as a youngster, like, was it hard for you to, uh, not, I'm not going to say retain the information you learned in your training regime, but, like, actually apply it when you first got in the ring? Like, did you remember all the fundamentals and all that, or, or did it just all it, go out like, it, once you? Sometimes, I mean, I'll say this. Depending on how well your coach puts you through your sparring versus mm -hmm. just letting you just go ham in in there control but not controlling how you box okay. um if that coach is on you about that if you come out on fire without understanding that coach because he's been doing that leading you up to it he, he can calm you down he can calm you down relax you to allow you to start to build and box how you normally box because those jitters do happen I got you. I got you. Um. So, what was your big takeaway from from uh, your, your first match? Like, so, uh, the, did you take it well? And the only reason I ask this, I, I know some people, d d depending on their temperament and their character, some people, and I say this with the most due respect to anybody out there in the sport, some people, you, you know, they take it on the shoulder, keep it moving. Some right, people right. are sore yeah, losers. It's broken. Yeah. I, 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 how, how did you take it, coach? I think I took it because I actually, um, I actually was was. Com Com in competition prior to that because I've wrestled okay. uh, during that time so I was used to being in competitions I lost I understood it was a sport and I moved on okay what made you want to continue forward with boxing um I think basically my, my brothers were boxing so okay. I've just followed followed suit but okay. then soon after soon after my father saw that my interest was 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 more into other things and okay. it was and it was martial arts so uh you do this how long were you do, doing boxing before you moved on to the next martial art i was 15. so 
uh, when you moved on, was it kick? So what was the other martial arts? Was it kick? Was it kickboxing? It was, it was taekwondo at the time. Okay. So uh, what what piqued your interest about that? Um, being well, it was more. You know, I used to watch a lot of martial arts movies. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Lee, flying, Jackie Chan. Yeah, yeah, man, the guys with the white hair. <laughs> so, so they flying and uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, my mind was was mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. because I really started to get into it and understand the kinetics of your body, um, and and that knowing that these guys actually knew what they were talking about. It may look funny, it may look a certain way, but they knew exactly what they were talking about, like that. As far as like with, with pressure points and. All of that, they knew what they were talking about. So if you, you make those changes mm -hmm. and make it work for you, it's, it becomes very dangerous. So with that being said, um, um, again, probably a duh type question, but j just asking. Um, so did you do any bouts in Taekwondo? Yeah, yeah, um, so, absolutely. Uh, it was point. It was point kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and kickboxing using Taekwondo. Yeah. Absolutely. They do that? Absolutely. Oh, I, oh. The Taekwondo is, they come, they, they do their, their, a lot of what we did were in-house um, competitions. Okay. So we would go off and do kickboxing okay. like that. So, um, but it was Taekwondo and you use the Taekwondo to go kickbox like that. Say less, so with that being said, like, uh, obviously major difference. So what was one of the big takeaways in your bouts? Um, I, I don't want to say as a kicker, right? but, but just, j just in Taekwondo, like, the different realm because that's a totally different yeah, martial art absolutely so so what was like one of the takeaways you got from that in, in, in that martial art um when you add extra elements and you know how to use them you you become very lethal and you okay. know especially if you're taking two this is why you have mixed martial arts if you're taking two i got my hands and my feet here's a guy with just his hands okay. if you know what you're doing from the top to the bottom. If you know what you're doing, you become very, very dangerous. Okay. So, so, but, so if you get into that and you're working with someone who actually also has the same thing, your awareness becomes very keen to see. Forgive me, coach, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little slow on that. So when you, when, when you say that, like, like aware to what? Aware to what's coming. Regardless if it's in the ring and outside of the ring? Absolutely. Oh, say less, all right. So, um. Out of all the training regimes that you've done, what was your, your, your hardest, which martial art was the most demanding to you? Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, so we, oh, uh, so, okay, let me, let me, I'm gonna bring it back, but, but, so uh, after, when did you pursue Jiu-Jitsu? Um, I, I have been training, like mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. I, I feel myself to be that, that, that guy with the, with, with the, with the staff, with the with the bag, mm -hmm. and I'm on my travel. Okay. I'm looking. Okay. Who got what? Who has this? Who has what? I work with a with a with a jujitsu with a with a um, Sanukis Ru member, um, Larry Bostic, who was a uh, uh, who was under um, Dr. Moses Powell, who in who had the style of Sanukis Ru jujitsu. Okay. Which is a style of martial art that our government uses. Okay. Which like, is, yeah. My bad, when, when you say our government, like mili military? No. Oh, I'm The sorry. U.S. government. Okay, my bad. Yeah. Uses Sinukas Ru in their, in their, in their, um, in their uh, uh, secret service. Okay. As well as uh, their, their, their secret service, their CIA, their secret service, and the, uh, the uh, FBI. How many years did you train in, in that realm? Um, I worked under Larry Bostic for at least three years. Okay. Of just... And what it is is it's 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 um it's, it's this amazing story. If you ever have time, look up um, Dr. Moses Powell. Okay. An amazing, amazing guy. Keep really, going. I'm, I'm, I'm talking okay. to myself. And um and it just shows the history of this great martial artist that you really hear nothing about. But Wesley Snipes did a, a, a program, a special, okay. strictly on him, okay. strictly on him, so that people wouldn't forget. This man was the greatest martial artist ever because okay. he was deadly, very dangerous. And what they use in field is met by his martial art. So with that being said, now I'm gonna bring it back full circle. Okay. So, so, so you said it was Jiu Jitsu. So, so what, what made that difference as far as the training regime, uh, the physical and mental de demands? What, 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 what made that different out of, out of Taekwondo and boxing? Now, you're looking at a striking Jiu Jitsu form mm -hmm. with locks and um, 
which you can only use certain locks, mm -hmm. certain maneuvers, certain things that would normally would open a person up, but you couldn't do them. So when you step, when I end up going into jujitsu, going into the cage, this information was almost, I couldn't use it. I couldn't use it because of the particular type of, uh, of art it was. So you can't use the certain, certain manipulations and stuff like that you would normally can use, say you were fighting someone. But okay. this had its rules. Mixed martial arts had its rules. Okay. Certain things that you just couldn't do. Couldn't manipulate the joints. You couldn't do none of that. Um, couldn't strike in certain areas. Uh, so when it was on me to go into fights with individuals I actually fought in the cage. Okay. I, have, I, I have five mixed martial arts, professional mixed martial arts um, fights. And each time I- In I, the cage? In the cage. Okay, okay. Um, Definitely gonna touch on that after you. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And each time I, 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 I dealt with a grappler. Okay. And guys, and, and, and to further my information of martial art, I actually, um, I'm, I'm under, uh, Dan Powers is a, is a, was a phenomenal yogi. And he, uh, he was a professor. And, and I have my certificate to train or to work under as a yogi. So a lot of yoga practice was in as I, as I, as I fought so I could slide out of that stuff that they were putting me in because that jujitsu was, I mean, jujitsu was real, 100% real. It's like, like going underwater and a shark getting a hold of you. Oh, if a guy oh. knows what he's doing, it's dangerous. It's definitely dangerous. So the cage, right? That atmosphere in that one, when, especially when those doors close or whatever, and, you know, you dap up. So what's the atmosphere and, and, and the tension and feelings you feel versus coming into the ring or going onto the mat? Like, like what, what's the cage atmosphere like, Coach? Fire. Fire? Fire. I mean, the boxing has its fire because of the, the augmentation that you get from the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, that cage is, that's, um, I mean, you could die in boxing. But okay. with that cage, anything can happen. Okay. You got elbows. You have you have and against it a competitor that that's looking to to destroy you okay. in that cage that, that it's it's, it's, a, it's a different world and you know I know they try to pit the two together but it's warrior against warrior um, but that cage man because you're against a guy who has the same if not more information than okay. you do with all kinds of realms of striking and then they can take you down and strike while you're down and and then soften you up to, 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 to wrap you up. If I may touch on this, so with everything you've done, with all the bouts, some, whether it was boxing, taekwondo, was there ever a time you, was there ever a time you did not get the jitters? Going, going I, into- Oh yeah, 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 later, later, I mean, you get, you, you, like Mike Tyson says it all the time, I was nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, but later when you get up to it and your nerves are picked back up, you know, you kind of, Forget about the jitters. You kind of get, because now your game, your, your game face is on, it's time. Because if not, you're going to get demolished. So you have to set, it takes time though. I, I, I give it to people. It, it takes time for you to get comfortable in whatever realm you're in, from the cage to the ring. Um, you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to settle your mind. Uh, and, and so that takes a little time for some. You have to settle, you have to settle that mind. So uh, allow me to ask you this in this format. Are you a boxer or are you just, are you, you're just a martial artist all around? I have a master's in martial arts. Okay. Since 2010. Okay. Under the World Martial Arts College. Okay. Under Dr. Um, professor, uh, Grand Master. Don't keep it going. Uh, uh, um, Garut Singh, who was, who was a mentor of mine, who actually- Still good? Sent my information to, to the World College and uh, martial arts, and they uh, they honored me with a master of martial arts. They thought he thought that I was going to just you know they was going to honor me with the belt, so the black belt, because he wanted to give me black belt. Okay. Um, but because of my extensive information, and more so of the individuals that I train in all different disciplines, because you you turn in your information, you mm -hmm. turn in your 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 alkali, you, you turn it in, you let the people know. Um, what, what you've done, and then you have that backing to prove it. Um, so I sent in everybody that I've worked with, the things that I've done, the information of the time that it was in, and it matched up. And these guys, they honored me with a master of martial arts. 
So uh, allow me to uh, uh, touch on this. Like from a social media standpoint, do you feel like with what we see maybe, you know, on an app or in the movies or, or, or on a YouTube special or whatever, there's misinformation being put out about martial arts? Absolutely. And the only reason I ask like that, somebody may, like prime example, uh, of, I'm just asking probably Dub, but you know who Michael Jai White is, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in, in a couple of, of his podcasts and even in his interviews, his, his perception of martial arts, one of the things he said was a lot of people will see a, a, a really, really cool flip kick trick in the movies and then they want to do that and they realize hey when i get in the ring or on the mat right. like it, 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 you could do all that shit if you want to but all it takes is, is one lethal hit one shot yeah whether it's from you know the fist the elbow but yeah so but do you feel like there's a lot of bringing it back mm -hmm. do you feel like there's a lot of misinformation from a social media standpoint into the martial arts oh 100 because these people are trained just okay. like a person would be trained to wield a sword mm -hmm. you can go play with that guy with that sword you can get chopped up. Yeah, for real. Same concept. If a guy's been training, a skilled guy's been training, and you and you think that you can possibly get over on him, possibly do these things without having this particular skill, then it's just a hype. Because one, most people are not gonna go do it. Okay. They're just gonna talk about it. But then you have people that will just go try it and to, to, to build themselves up around it, which is sad because at the same time, you can die. Mm -hmm. You can 100% die in this ain't nothing to fucking play with. No, okay. no, you don't play boxing. Mm -hmm. No, wow. this is real. So allow me to touch on this, cause, uh, you, you as a trainer, so with everything you've done, the accolades that you have in the martial arts realm, what made you uh, uh, want to be a trainer? I felt, I felt I can give it. Okay. I felt that I had information. Everybody that actually could, who have boxed or fought, some don't necessarily make good trainers. Okay. They really don't. Some just don't have the time for it. So they're um, better as the martial artist versus absolutely, that absolutely versus teacher. being a teacher. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you have some people that have actually let you know, man, I that's not what I do. Okay. That's not what I do. I've had actually guys that tell me, no, that's not what I do, man. I'd rather go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, allow me to touch on this with uh I'm gonna bring it back full circle. Forgive me, coach. I probably so what were some of the, 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 before I get to the trainer, what were some of the challenges that, that you faced overall in, in, in your martial arts career? What, what, what were some of the things where it just made you go, it, your love for it pushed push, push through the challenge. What I mean by that is you face something and it made you go, hey, I don't wanna do this shit no more. Um, I had a few surgeries okay. that pushed me back. Mm -hmm. Like I had all in all repositioning. Mm -hmm and on both my arms. So it kind of, it pushed me back to where I could be as athletic as I needed to be. Cause I would, I, man, I kid you not. It, when, it, when, it, when it's all over and said and done with, I'm going to possibly be carried out on a mat. Okay. Seriously. Cause I think at the, when it's over with, when I'm done with all of this, I'll be on my back working, mm. working, working yeah. till it's over with. Till it's done. Yes, sir. Till it's done. So, so I don't think I would never, I never just, I'm done. I'm just saying, well, I'll, I'll go find my niche. I can't do this no more. Okay. This is, yeah, this is, this is, this is, I'm not going to say this is for the young guys. I'm saying this is for the healthy. This is definitely for the healthy. I'm broken. So you, you I don't think you should be playing with your life if you ain't, if you're not almost 100. Even Chuck Liddell made a statement, you're never 100% when you actually enter a fight because you probably broke your finger or something. But when you have something that, that, that pulls you, yeah, you gotta be careful with your life. Got you, got you. So um, what are the type, as a trainer, what are the types of people that you've met as a trainer? Like, like you know what, back it up and bring it back. So what, what have you trained? Have you trained youngins and adults? I know it's, it's for the audience. Have you trained youngins mm -hmm. and adults? Yes, I've trained, I've, I trained with me, I trained, I trained everyone in any age, any, 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 um, any uh, gender, mm -hmm. I don't care. If you have a desire, you want to work, I'm going to give you what I have. Okay. And, and um, uh, sometimes it's not for everyone. Boxing <laughs> is not for the, 
the, the it's not for the weak. I'm not going to lie to you. You can you can play and bounce around, and these coaches have these girls doing these weird movements. I'm, I hate to say it, but if you're going <laughs> to play with some, yeah, yeah. If you're mm -hmm. not, if you're going to play with them, you know, if you're going to play with them, then you play with them with something else. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest that because who's to say that poor lady won't run out on someone after someone comes at her mm -hmm. and and she tries that madness and then she's wondering Fucked. why she, yeah. wondering why she get knocked. Yeah, okay. But you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you know if you're gonna do that, then do it for real. Okay. Make sure that they're doing it for real. Make sure that it's 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 real. Um but you know, I I have worked with a lot of different people and, and, and for kids, I work with them. And with the with the kids, I, I look at certain things with them, and I'm not I'm not ashamed to tell a parent, not yet. Let's go do something else, and I'll send them like here. They also offer a really amazing wrestling program. It's the Python wrestling program here at World's Gym. Her, here at World's Gym. And and the coach is um, Mason, and um, it's another it's another amazing coach. But it's several individuals that go over there from Hayden. All these great individuals. This is this is a very 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 tight niche community in here. So it's a beautiful place to come. Here or, gym. Or, or, or boxing oh, in general? No, the whole place in this gym. Okay, World's okay. Gym, it, the, the connection is, 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 is amazing because it's a competition gym. So everyone's. Oh, it is. It's so, a so, so you're the, training competitors. It's competitors. Okay. And this whole facility okay. is everyone is desired, desired to compete. So uh, allow me to ask this. Um, Someone, and again, I'm gonna ring a full circle for this you. whole interview, but someone who doesn't want to compete, but if they say, hey, coach, it, it, being serious too, mm -hmm. right. hey, coach, um, I don't want to ever get in the ring, Absolutely. but I definitely just want to learn how to defend myself. I want, I, I want to take a punch and give out a punch. Would you still consider training that person? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. it's still in mm -hmm. a sense of him competing because he still wants to defend himself. Okay. That's still competition. Okay, that, okay. Because you want to be prepared for it. So allow me to ask you this, like, what are the things that you personally have to see to go, okay, yeah, no, nah, I don't think this is for you yet. Let's mm -hmm. move you over to here. Like, like, what are some of the things you have to see from a young into an adult for you to make that assessment this isn't for you? Attention span is my biggest thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, if, okay. If your attention is out of there, I'm going to attention and believe it or not, man, I've had some kids this is a, a few years ago. I've had these kids, man. I would always make this statement to say when people would come in, it'd be women, it'd be anyone, it'd be anyone, and they want to box. I've, I've, and like I said, no, no color barrier, no, no sex, no, no nothing. I take and I work with everyone. And if I see something great in you, I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it. I've had females that reach the highest height. Um, I've had uh, the number three three woman, women's boxing um, uh, 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 female boxer who took third in the world. I've had her, I trained her, uh, Ebony Storm Rivera, um, mm. myself and Angel Diaz. Um, so I've, I've, I've had these people, Abel Truth Perry, who went to, to, to New York to fight um, at, uh, at uh, Broadway um, and under a Lou DiBello show. Um, uh, and, and it was a Japanese champion, Charlie Oda. So, and then I pushed to, to, um, to be under a, a, a very nice situation of uh, where I was at top rank at MGM. And that was just two years ago on live on the, um, on, it was pay-per-view. And it was uh, with, uh, against Troy Isley former Olympian, one of my guys, and, and he did very, very well. I mean, exceptionally well, because after, after that boxing match, he took the L, um, but it was, it was a great boxing match. Troy thought he could just go and do what he needed to do, but this guy was, he was, he was, he was trained. And, and, but I say that because everyone after Troy Isley destroys Okay. destroys them. He destroys them. And people reach out to my guy and they tell him, uh, uh, Brian Costello, they reach out and say, man, and they'll go back and they'll tell him, hey, man, this guy, Troy Isley, has been murdering everybody else, but you stood in there because, we, you know, they're trying to push him because you lose that luster sometimes. Okay. You lose it if it's not going your way. 
and a lot of people not to not to come off course but a lot of people know. sometimes they they pick certain things that they shouldn't take and it and it and it and it, and it dulls their life okay. you know because sometimes you'll be in a bad situation like the rocky movies it's the true thing you you've been in a bad situation you need to make some money mm -hmm. so you go fight i don't care who it is i'm gonna go fight this guy i need the money so people still doing that they're yeah. still they're still hey man I'll, I'll be the opponent some are crazy because they have no information mm. and you have these whack promoters that'll go find these guys and mm. say hey man come do a couple of fights. i heard i heard you was a killer in the street mm -hmm. come get, and they're getting murdered in these rings because these are skilled individuals <coughs> skilled so they come down on that a lot now they they're starting to so you kind of pose a question and and, and I'll, I'll try to make it make sense then then bring it back full circle for your journey so um certain boxers like uh oh boy my channel's really small so i doubt he'll see this but uh somebody like a a deontay wilder right right so um i don't want to say nothing out of ignorance but a lot of people had always questioned his skill because they always made it seem like he was a beat -em up type dude versus a, versus an actual skillful fighter they say mm -hmm. hey you're you're just very you're, you're very powerful when it comes to knocking somebody out mm -hmm. but when you get in that ring mm -hmm. versus somebody with with exceptional and phenomenal skill you're 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 nothing absolutely so with that being said bringing the full circle to the question it's, it's kind of like the, based on what you were saying like is that a good comparison to what you just said or or, or no completely off the money the only reason i ask that is because again he he has accolades for about himself. It's not like he's a rookie in this game. Absolutely. But based on the, with what you just told me, the person I thought about was a Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like okay, they say he's a bully in the ring, but you he come a, a, a across he's a very, a, a very yeah a, a very a very technical yeah. fighter. Yeah. Dude don't know what to do. Yeah. I mean you you have that, and with me, as as you know, I'm not saying I'm the I'm the I'm the expert here. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have information. Okay. So with me, if I see a boxer, if I see someone, and this I, I pride myself in it, is if I see you, I'm gonna know how to beat you. Okay. If I look, and like all boxing coaches, are, but sometimes, if you ain't never been in there, mm -hmm. you don't know. Some mm -hmm. guys that walk up, they 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 their coach ain't never been in the ring. For real? Some of them. It's a lot of guys that their coach has never been in the ring before. Is that just in North Carolina or just in general? No, 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 no. Oh. Some, there's some coaches out there okay. that are out there with great names who've never been in the ring before, ever. Isn't that kind of discreditable? It is. Okay. And I believe Floyd Mayweather touched up on it about a particular boxing coach. And because, and it makes so much sense. I'm in the ring, mm -hmm. I'm hurt, mm -hmm. I'm damaged goods. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm dis discombobulated. I've been, I've been, I'm in there, I'm hurt real bad, and I need to get up, or I need to keep going. This coach ain't never felt that. How he gonna talk you through it? How would he talk you through it? Because that connection between that coach and that, and that, 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 that competitor, like with anything, you wanna talk them in through it. You guys are linked, you're connected. So if that person's never been through it, you ain't gonna never see a NBA coach who ain't never played basketball. So can that concept also apply to other martial arts, like having a coach that's never been either in the cage or in the ring? Is that only, I guess, to boxing? No, I'm, I'm curious. That's, that's in any any martial art. any martial art. Okay. If you've never been tested, then how you gonna prove you know what you know? Hmm. How? And how can they believe in you? So allow me to. Uh, Coach, that, that's some, I did not know, right. I swear it. So right. I just, I, and I promise you, they learned something because that, that makes sense. Absolutely. So allow me to, and, and then promise you I'll bring it full circle, but here's another question since you brought up Floyd. Um, this was a conversation I had with my peers one time. Do you feel like Floyd uh, ruined the sport of boxing? And here's why I asked that. Everybody can't take an L no more and bounce back. It's right. like it, it's like your boxing career is over. So, it, right, right. so so you could have twenty nine and zero. Absolutely. You have that one L. Mm -hmm. It's like your career is over. So with that being said, do do you feel like Floyd contributed to that because because of his record? I mean, because it has that zero. Yes. Um. It it, it plays a big part in people trying to keep up with that. 
It's like okay. a fad with anything. It's a fad, you know, and keep up with that. But now, because you got these guys that's fighting for these zeros. Hey, hey man, I want to go down in history. I want to go down in history to, to never, never been defeated. Mm-hmm. I w- and and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. I can't take anything away from Floyd Mayweather. Okay. No one can. They can talk what they want, mm-hmm. but they can't take anything away from this guy. He's a genius. Mm-hmm. He's a boxing genius for himself and who he boxed. Okay. And they can say what they want. Mike Tyson was 20, 21 or, uh, to, or 20 to be the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. But then they make the point to say Canelo was, he wasn't in his prime. Mike Tyson was a, was a world champion at 20 mm-hmm. years old. What's the beef? Mm-hmm. So, so it, sometimes when it's right for you, if it's right for you, then these, these, these made up things happen. Mm-hmm. But, but f- as far as what Floyd goes, whoever he was in front of, if he didn't, if he didn't, if he didn't, if he didn't, um, if he didn't, if he didn't totally dominate you, he came back and boxed you again and then dominated you. The same thing he did with M- Madonna, okay. who it was a little rough ride. But then you've been in the ring with a master. Okay. He's learned you, just like the old martial arts movies. The guy, he don't work the guy, he don't work them, and he had a little trouble with him. And all he did when he had the second chance was to learn him. So he learned him, and when he learned him, he just destroyed him the second time. So allow me to say on this, and then I'm going to bring it full because they're about to close soon, Okay, too. okay. But um, the reason why I had asked that also, too, was because... In the realm of boxing, whether you're a pro, whatever, to me, when I hear something like that, not gave a great example, but hearing if he ruined the sport or not, mm-hmm. I always thought it, it was, it was, you know, the underdog story. Yeah. Like, because again, how are you, how are you discredited for that that one loss? So mm-hmm. That's why I asked. Right. Right. But, but right. Um, I mean, back in, years ago, when you had duran and all these guys that that didn't mind hey i lost this is mm-hmm. the, this is the competition sport sometimes you're going to lose mm-hmm. you can't win them all mm-hmm. you cannot win them all some people ha- should have pushed out of their time when they were great mm-hmm. um but some that that build themselves floyd did the right thing he got up out of there still play around a little bit but he got it out of there away from the, the the real temperament of boxing and he walked away with his he walked away with his belts mm-hmm. he walked away with his egg and what as far as that, the people that followed him, they messed that up on so, themselves. They, they wanted to follow him, and I'm going to keep my zero. I'm going to keep my zero by not challenging themselves. He still challenged himself, though. If I may, I may ask on that, do you feel like that could be bad for someone's temperament and psyche? And the only reason I ask it like that is because, again, the, the, the whole stigma is you get that one loss, right. regardless of how many Ws, you, and they could right. all be by knockout. Right, right. You know, but it, it, it's like your career, your promotion is, is is pretty much. So, so do you think that that plays a bad part on the fighter psyche? If it, that is it, true, it, it may because this guy's right now that don't understand what a loss is, mm-hmm. um, and and you fight that, you fight it uh, in the amateurs. Um, you know, you beat yourself up. I mean, it's a competition sport, so you you're gonna beat yourself up. But at the same time, it's on that coach, it's on that, that mentor to build that person to know, hey, man, we win, we win. But if we lose, we come back because it can't happen twice. Okay. That's where your mind should be. Okay. That's where your mind should be. And this is why you used to have all these great competition boxing matches because he got me that time. I'm going to get him this time going back and forth like that. And some you've had that because now you look at Joshua. He's coming back. Mm-hmm. Josh is finding himself back and, and, and it, it's just it's just the concept of everybody else's thought of how that looks that's all and, and you know I, I don't follow it I don't I don't care nothing about it mm-hmm. as far as you have a zero mm-hmm. it's good you holding on to it if you lose then come back and beat the guy come back beat the guy that's where that's where it counts come back and beat him come back and beat him it just only makes you better got you Coach, I really appreciate you, you touching on that. So I'm definitely going to bring it back full circle to you. You, you definitely did change my perspective. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as your journey in this, right? So I did ask, like, when was some of the challenges, thing, things you, you, you faced um, in your martial arts career and as a coach? So what were some of the rewarding things that you got out of those? Um, martial arts and you being a coach. A lot of, again, you know, having that history to say I can check this off. I mean, for myself, I did some cool things. Um, 
Uh, but for me, I believe more so it, it was it's my training. I've trained some very, very talented people and that my joy comes from that because um, I'm pushing them out into the world or I'm giving the world, letting the world see them. Um, so that's my biggest, my biggest hurrah is the fact that I'm training very, very skilled individuals, people that have reached certain plateaus, um, uh, even worked, worked hand in hand with Ray Mercer when he fought mm. Tim Sylvia uh, and knocked Tim Sylvia out in nine seconds. <laughs> Just on the conversation of Ray, he's gonna kick you. They all kick you. They all gonna take you down. Don't fall for it. Once they do it, this is what happened. This is how you deal with it like that. And that's what happened. Nine seconds, he knocked this big fella out in the UFC, in a, in a, in a cage fight, mm. in a cage fight. So, so yeah, it's been, yeah. So I've been, I've been accredited to work with some great people um, from, from amateur boxers, amateur kickboxers. When uh, I trained for a while in, with Muay Thai. Um, so Have you I, done Muay Thai too? Absolutely, man. So, so, so my, my bad, mm -hmm. rewinding just a tidbit. So okay. still your jujitsu training right. was harder than Muay Thai? Absolutely. Because of, with me, mm -hmm. Thai, because where you are. Okay. You're in that realm right here on the ground. Okay. Now, if I'm standing up and going to the ground and being able to stand up, that's a different world. But you're strictly on the ground. Okay, okay. Strictly on the ground. I'll take that. You have your tie. You have this once you get to understanding if you're protecting and building what protects you. But if you have a boxer's background, you can see. If you have a true boxer's background, you can see. So it's going to make you... It's going to spread you out in those standing arts. Okay. It's going to make you well-rounded in those standing arts. But when you take that to the, to the floor, it's going into the water. You're going deep into that ocean. And if a guy knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. by, and what my concept is being a snake to a rock, if you stay close and you're just until you start to squeeze and bend and break, you, 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 you're in a whole different world, man. Probably a rhetorical question, but, but again, it, it poses. So... With all the martial arts that you know, is it hard to retain and keep all that information? The only reason I say that, one concept of Muay Thai is different from Taekwondo. Absolutely. One concept of, 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 of Jiu Jitsu is different from, from, from boxing. So is it hard, like, because those are many different yeah. training regimes yeah. and many different styles. Yeah. So, so is, is it hard to keep no. all that? It's not. I've, I've had one incident where I came out of character. I'm boxing a little very aggressive Ebony Storm Rivera. And it's the only time ever that I came out of my element, but she was coming so hard and this female has little rocks on her hands. <laughs> so you feel everything. So I shot a knee to a chin. Yeah, I shot a <laughs> knee to a chin. What was your facial expression? Did you just? I froze, oh, just... and she just backed up. Woozy is a mom. real woozy. <laughs> and she was ready. So, oh, I'm gonna kill you. I'm like, yo, my bad man. Yo, it was it was crazy. So, 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 so only reason I ask, so, so, that's like an anime moment to me, right? Like, like, right, like, like right. You, you you using one style, right? And, right. And, and came and, right and, out. And, and, and had your no natural choice. instinct beat like, I, no oh choice. shit, my bad yeah, man. No choice. Damn. No choice. But it, so so that does happen where where, where 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 and it, and it was just it's not like it's, you thought about nope, it it was it was it's reaction. Say yeah. less. Sorry, move. Thank you for that. Absolutely, I, I, it, man. Absolutely. Probably should have started this a little bit earlier because there's a lot. Anyway, so we got on the rewarding aspect. So allow me to ask you this. Um, and 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 just in the realm of fitness, where there's boxing, what are some things you like about the realm of fitness, and what are some things you dislike about the realm of uh, something? I said fitness. What are some things you like about the realm of martial arts? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And what are some things you dislike about the realm of martial arts? Etiquette. Hmm? Etiquette. Elaborate for me, coach. Mannerisms. Okay. And what your art is. I mean, for years, warriors, warriors, martial artists, warriors, they had a particular type of respect that you received. Mm -hmm. And it was a particular type of way that you you entered something, the type, particular type of way that you, you received your information, the, the, the way that you, you conveyed it. There's no mannerism. There's no mannerism, there's no respect for it. It's just out the window. It's like almost unheard of. It's very, what, what I mean by, mm -hmm. it's um, simple. 
I walk, I understand that the bag is there. And that bag, like most people, they'll kick it with the shoes on. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you walk on the mat with your shoes. Um, you don't give the respect to the, to the, to the instructor. Um, there's not a lot of closed mouths, as everyone knows, mm. like that. So, so you get that. I don't, I don't stand for it. You okay. got to go. Okay. You, you got to hit the road. Okay, okay. I don't stand for that. We, we work in, if you, you came to where I was, you understand that, that my information is great. For me, my information and for what I put out there, it says that I'm great, not no, not not being um, on, over my head on it, but at the same time, I put out some great information. So allow me to access that way. I have a better mm -hmm. understanding of it. So maybe not challenging, but like 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 uh, not challenging the information, but does questioning it does questioning it also count towards disrespect as well like 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 somebody that's inquisitive about no no it. be inquisitive you okay. want to be okay. you want to be inquisitive i mean there's some jokers that are just talk your head off and ask you the most craziest yeah, thing gotcha, okay. but if you're if you're you can tell that individual that really wants to get it and and it might be something that's slacking or lacking in and in, in what he understands and he's going to ask those questions no no, no take that receive that but an individual that knows, that's the dangerous thing. The one who claimed to know, but okay. doesn't know anything. He that, showed up, he mm -hmm. showed up one week. Mm -hmm. Now he knows everything. He's out there training people. He's out there showing people. <laughs> there's no, there's, uh, yeah, there's okay. no respect there. Okay. There's no respect there. So um, that's the dislike aspect. What, what about the like aspect? The almost? like, mm -hmm. the likes is, is the fact that is, is, it's a warrior's, it's a warrior, all combatives, it's, it's all warrior spirit. I mean, you have to, one, you have to be knowing yourself, knowing what's around you. And you see for really most warriors, most, most warriors are very loving people, but they need to do what they need to do. So you pose another question. See, I, I love this shit. That's why I'm saying I don't ever come on here with notepads or anything. Right. I listen. So with that being said, allow me to uh, touch on character of 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 of, of people because mm -hmm. you say warriors and, and and all that other stuff so have you ever come one type of person coach i want to learn how to defend myself um i'm in a surrounding where people try you i'm not going out looking for a fight mm -hmm. but if somebody put their hands on me i want to defend you versus hey coach i want to beat people up right. i enjoy i i yeah, enjoy I'm i enjoy uh, inflicting pain, and I'm gonna go out on the streets. Once you teach me these tools, I'm gonna go fuck people up. Right. So with that, I'm not taking that guy. I don't care what kind of money he got. Mm -hmm. You, you, that's 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 evil. Okay. That's really really evil. So allow me to touch on this. What the, this is just my assessment. I'm not saying it's true. Mm -hmm. This is just what I've assessed. But in the realm of martial arts, it seems like to me. There's more bullies, evil people mm. in the realm of martial arts. Right. The, 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 what you described was value, valiant, honorable. Mm. Absolutely. But oh, you, you, see, you, mm. you, you, you have, you have, what was a, what was a Cobra Kai? You do have the Cobra Kai's. Okay. You do have those individuals that, 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 that they seek out to destroy. You have that. Okay. You have that. I've been in, I've been in, 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 in schools where we, go out and you, you see these coaches that they're relentless. I mean, even with me, if, if, I'm, if I'm out in competition, I want to be relentless, but at the same time, say that, that there's, no, there's nothing involved but a win. If I have a female across or a male across, across an opponent, as an opponent to my person, to, to one of my guys, if they're beating the brakes off of them, they're going to pull because it's about, it's, about, it's, a, it's about the respect. We're not, there's, no, there's nothing. There's, you don't get nothing for that. You don't get nothing for it. I've actually been in a kickboxing um, tournament where one of my female kickboxers was just destroying this female, and she laid off of her. She laid off of her because it's not what it's about. So at the end of the day, my bad coach, but, mm -hmm. so, but, but at the end of the day, so it's just, it falls down on character. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. okay. So so thank you for that. So only reason I ask, um, Again, bringing it back to Michael Jaw White could be because he he told me how he well, not told me he he did a podcast one time and he talked about um 
how he had trained a couple of individuals for the police academy, this, mm -hmm. that, and the third. And one of them, he pretty much said what you said. Right. Well, one, I'm not training that guy, but right. he was like, dude, really came up and told him, I want to hurt people. Right. Why? Why? You know, so, yeah. but, but it was just, it, I felt the need to ask, because I don't know Michael Wajawa. I, I don't mm -hmm. know any of the greats, whether they're right. movie stars or influencers right. Right. Or, or martial artists, but I, I know one in this gym. So I, I see the people that train, and I even see the work that you put in. Mm -hmm. There are days, even after you get done training, you're out on the floor, whether you're not hitting the heavy bag yourself, you're out on that floor curling, doing some type of discipline training. So, so that's why I said, hey, um, I want to bring you to this channel. Um, and I know some people, whether they're boxers or not, they're going to listen to your perspective, and I hope they retain this, this information. Last question, then I'll then I move it to the, to, the, to the questionnaires. Do you think somebody, and it doesn't have to be boxing, because I feel like there's a martial art. I believe I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. There's a martial art for everybody, but do you think somebody with that of a gentle nature probably wouldn't be able to commit to a martial art? And the only reason at the end of the day, outside of self-defense, yes, but mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like at the end of the day, you don't the, the the mindset of that person they don't generally want to hurt anyone. Yeah, you know? some yeah. some they don't they 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 don't want to hurt anyone. Um, but you you've had some really really beautiful boxers and, and, and kickboxers or mm -hmm. cage guys that have very beautiful personalities in life and because they learn the skill and again because it's 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 my it's my it's my job in a sense mm -hmm. you look at Khabib okay. very very gentle person very very loving person very very believing person mm -hmm. but this is business oh uh, okay this is business okay. you can have a beautiful heart but this is business. Allow me to touch on this, but, but and I'll, it's a minute and then it's a 10 question uh, questionnaire. So um, any advice that you want to give to two boxers and martial artists on, on my channel? It is relatively small, still growing, but just people who take interest in the realm of, of martial art. Is, is there any advice you'd want to give to my audience? I would say to, every, to anyone that, that would want to, to pursue Whatever martial art there is that they're they're looking into, they wanna they wanna try. You can try different things. <clears throat> try different things, find what, what suits you. But the most important thing is that person that you're going to, make sure they know what they're doing. Get their information, ask those questions about them. Make sure they know what they're saying is to be true, not because of something they read, not because they stood in the corner and hung out with another coach who actually was boxing. Mm. Um, you, you want that individual to be able to tell you, hey, man, this is what I did. Here's what I did. And then you find some guys that have told lies. I've actually heard a guy tell a kid that, yeah, I used to work with this person all the time and never work with anyone, but said that they did just to build the information for this, to, the, the whispering. Oh man, coach did this. I remember, and you send in a seed, you plant in a seed for other people to believe that this is what you did. And there are people that are very undermining and they do these things. Very sad. Find that real coach. Find that person that knows what they're talking about. I think they'll allow us a little bit more time. We, we almost done. So allow me, allow me to also ask this. Isn't that kind of also dangerous in the realm of martial arts? What do you mean? So somebody who, who, who's trying to build that, that level of credibility about them, and, and, and I, it even goes back to what you said, that they, they, they've never even gotten the ring themselves. Right. If they're trying to build their re, 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 reputation up, isn't that, isn't that dangerous? Uh, bad, isn't that overall bad for that person who wants to learn? Absolutely. That okay. person should be up under them. Okay. They shouldn't be up under them. Okay. They, they shouldn't listen to a thing they're saying mm -hmm. because you're an enthusiast. Mm -hmm. You didn't challenge yourself to go tell someone to do what you wouldn't do. Coach, I really appreciate you allowing me to hit you with this questionnaire. Um, also, uh, moving forward, because, you, you, Coach, you have a lot of information, man. It's just I, we had to condense it to, no, well, uh, to, to, to an hour. Um, in the future, as a returning guest, please, mm -hmm. please allow me to bring you back. Absolutely. And, and, and just put more of this knowledge out there. Um, I'm, I'm really glad I, I had to sit down. Um, you make guest number 34, so so 35. 
Okay. Again, thank you for coming to the channel. Absolutely, I'm thank, you for, thank you for coming to my audience. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I'm gonna start this uh, rapid fire. It's ten questions, so okay. here we go. Rest day or cheat meal? Rest day. If you had to pick, conventional deadlift or sumo? Sumo. Energy drink or coffee? Coffee. Cardio or sauna? Cardio. Bulgarian split squat or hip thrust? Bulgarian. Bodybuilding or strongman? Bodybuilding. Nike or Adidas? Adidas. Rock and roll or hip hop? Hip hop. One rep max or repetition? Repetition. Phil Heath or Ronnie Coleman? Ronnie Coleman. Say less, say less. I'm going in this. Hey, coach, again, as humble as I can, thank you so, so much. Um, I feel like I probably should have brought you on a lot sooner. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. Again, I, the reason why I'm so humble because you paid me something very, very valuable, and that was your time. Mm -hmm. Yes, you gave me knowledge for this, but like, um, I forgot what, it's something I agree with. I believe it was 50 Cent, but one of the most valuable things we have in life is time. time absolutely. And you gave me an hour of your time absolutely. for this channel. So no again, problem. Coach, on some real shit, thank you. Thank World's you. Gym, thank you for allowing me to have to sit down with him in his ring. Again, World's Gym, one of the greatest gyms out there in favor of North Carolina. Other than that, we are out. <sighs> Ooh.